Hey guys, welcome to the Gig Economy Podcast. This st- studio is sponsored by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. We'll talk about them a little bit later. Woo! If you do me a favor, if you could share the show on uh, Facebook, hit the like button on YouTube, subscribe to this show, retweet it on Twitter, all that fun stuff. We would really appreciate it. If you want to get more information about the show, you can go to gigeconomyshow.com. All the links are in the description of the show. We also have a TikTok. Uh, yes, Priscilla hasn't done anything on that yet. I'm waiting for him to do that. I don't do TikTok. Uh, he just he just sucks his life out of him, TikTok does. Uh, we also have a Facebook community group. We uh, don't know why I didn't start this from day one, but we just started it now. You know, it's about time, 104 episodes. I mean, it's only been three years. It's probably good that we start a community. Should probably start. Spending some time in there, huh? Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I probably should. Uh, so, yeah, check that out. Obviously, again, links are all in the description. I just want to give a big shout out to our Patreon members, Keith, uh, Janet, Larry, Sampson, Steve, Chris, James, and Bud Dickman. Always Bud Dickman. I love Bud Dickman. He's the sexiest mother effer out there. Also, new thing tonight. Not it's, it's always been like this. What you, you is this ha- breaking news? No, it's not breaking news. Oh. But you know all the links. You can now go to gigeconomyshow dot com slash links. Yep, and you got them all. Yeah, everything you need is there, and that is helpful. So, uh, hey Keith, how are the roads? The roads are wet, Keith. Probably wet like you from Indiana. Thanks for joining. Haven't seen you in a while. Appreciate you. We, um, we like the wet roads. Yeah, you do. I bet you do. I bet you do. We were just talking about all the snow going away. Yeah, I know. I'm actually really excited about that because, yeah, as you all know, I do lawn fertilization or mowing the lawn, however you want to. You don't mow. I know, but that was always the joke. Uh, It'll come back when the season comes, but I'm excited. A lot of the snow melt is gone. I'm sure we'll get more storms between now and uh, mid-March, but I'm happy. So check out our Telegram group. We had a new member, Angela. I can't remember her last name. I said hi. She didn't say anything back, so she probably already left. Probably Bud Dickman <laughs> scared her off. He uh, does that to people. Yeah, he he's you got to keep an eye he, on him. He's ruthless. He is ruthless. Yeah. yeah. Is. <laughs> also, uh, just want to talk about Steve, who is in the chat right now from Rideshare Rodeo. Uh, love that guy. Check out his podcast. He drops two episodes a week. He's like on top of it. We're two episodes a month. He's two episodes a week. And uh, check him out, rideshirrodeo.com. Is that because he had nothing better to do than just you know sit in front of his, man, his computer and record all the time? I don't know. That dude's busy. <laughs> like it, Every time I am stop into somebody else's channel when they're like streaming on YouTube, he's in there talking. <laughs> like, I, where are you? You're like a machine. Is he actually doing, po- you know, a real like, uh, gig, gig show anymore? Or is it just you know out driving or is he just recording? No, he, he he's... <laughs> He's putting up some great content, so check him out. GD says it's an ice skating rink out there right now. I wonder where you're from. I don't uh It's not here, not in Grand Rapids. Maybe it's north. Could, could be north could for be sure. North. We will be on, actually, Jesper will be on the radio show. Last week, he was on there. Oh, that's and, right. And he was I agreed just, to that, didn't I? Y- you what? <laughs> I agreed to that, didn't you I? You did. He did a great job. Steve was out sick. So it was a good time for Jesper to fill in. Go to tncradio.live. Uh, you can download the iOS or Android app, and you can listen to us 7 to 9 Eastern. Talk a lot of stuff. We got a little political on uh, we did. On Friday. We I got did. quiet. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, okay, y'all, let's let's move on. Let's that was the, on. The, 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 yes. But it, it was fun. It was fun meeting the guys, um, and it was just a good experience. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, got, I'll be back. Two of them are from Texas, uh, and then Jesper and I for GR, and then Steve from Denver. So it's so a wide range. Definitely a little bit of my upbringing as well kind of brings it in. So, no, oh, it's, yeah. it's Gregory from the group. He says he's up in Walker. So maybe, maybe you're going to be slipping all over the place when you uh, go home tonight. I hope not. I've got, right. I got to go back to Walker. Yeah, you do. I know. So uh, this is, I I got a bunch of stories, but this one I just want to touch on. I'll try to make it brief as possible, but I don't know when you ask about when you hear going pirate, if you know what that means, but I got a a request from a certain platform uh, that was going 45 minute plus. I ended up uh, accepting it, found out it was going about five and a half hours south and ended up canceling the ride. Now, this is why I canceled it. So... (laughs) 
I'm put this thing as, as a warning. We recommend that if you're doing those long trips, you ask for some money up front, but stay on the platform because you're covered with insurance. I asked for a little money and he paid it right away. He, he cash at me. And then one of my buddies in the group, uh, if you can check the telegram group, this is why this is a, it's such impactful. As I was waiting for this guy was moving his whole life to Columbus. Like in a, it was like a bad situation for this kid. He hadn't eaten in two days. Someone else ordered the ride, blah, blah, blah. But my buddy said, yo, like $300 lift caps out at 300 bucks. And then my ride would be over and I'd have to re-request. Well, the weird part is the guy that was requesting the ride isn't in the car. He's in, right. in the place where I'm driving to. So we ended up doing it for cash allegedly. Um, but I felt so bad for this Can't kid. Can't be proven though. Can't be proven. Yeah, I uh, I felt real bad for this kid. He hadn't eaten in a couple of days, so I ended up feeding him at a gas station a couple of times. And so it's kind of a weird trip. The kid was a little odd. Uh, I have an autistic son. Uh, actually, Jesper does too. But this kid was autistic. I it, when I say kid, he was probably twenty five, and just struggling in life. Big gamer. Um, actually met the guy that ordered the ride on Discord. Didn't even guy, have the guy's number. Like, but they were just gaming buddies for years. And so he was going to go move in with him. So where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. So so anyways, I bring him down. There was kind of a quiet ride or whatever. I get there. The guy that ordered the ride walks out in a robe, like <laughs> straight up pimp robe. And he's walking around. It just he was weird, too. And I'm like, OK, what is going on? This is so strange. So I didn't feel uh, that it was an unsafe situation, but right. it was just strange. So then as we're leaving, he goes, hey. I have a bunch of AK-47s. <laughs> like, who says this, by the way? And since Biden's new rules, I my guy that I sell them to doesn't want them. So if you want an AK-47, you can have one. I'm like, cool, bro. I'll see you later. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. But <laughs> a little bit kind of kicks myself that I didn't actually ask for one just to see if he actually could produce it. But it's pretty good that he didn't just took take one out of the of the room i would have shit my <laughs> pants if he would have produced one i would have shit i probably would have called the cops i would have drove away and called right. the cops because like that's some scary shit and then i more in concern about the kid i just dropped off right so anyways that's my story don't go pirate but if you do make sure it's worth your money i i i wish i would have asked for a little bit more because it cost me 120 in fuel because my truck's a gas guzzler so oh okay anyways that is my story from the road. Jesper, any stories from the road? <laughs> no. I don't have any stories. I don't have ever any stories. Ah, <laughs> John, mad disrespectful. Mm. Yes, mad disrespectful. disrespectful. Thank you, John. But, I mean, I miss it, right? That's the only story I have. I miss it. Yeah. So. Gregor said he might have, have produced a loaded one. Yeah, I allegedly am a CPL carrier, and I did not allegedly have my carry gun with me on that trip <laughs> it was back home so i would have shit bricks if <laughs> yeah you I did the right thing just out of there well no i didn't feel threatened by him at all i mean he was a no, little yeah. twerp i mean he was tiny i mean you put a gun in somebody's hand doesn't matter if they're big or small it can well, but i, mean, I, I wasn't know how to use it use them yeah uh <laughs> i wasn't too too concerned about him at all but That's good. So anyways, thanks for the the super chat, John. I really super appreciate it. See what I did there? hey oh, I know you already did that. All right, guys. This is your favorite part of the podcast. I know it is. It is the ad for Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. You can call them at 532-6600 and schedule your shit online, Irvine.com. <laughs> I thought I'd just spice it up a little bit. Um, they are... I last week I posted a video like they have completely remodeled that place like they are putting up steel walls and like it's going to be huge so nice check them out I have a knock or a rattle in my car that just started a couple days ago which I'm figures right I'm about a month out from being done with gig work for six months and I'm getting a rattle somewhere well the van is just paid for now and now it's you're getting all the, the, dash, the lights the dashboard lighting up like a christmas oh, tree. oh <laughs> no but we would appreciate if you would call them uh they are the best in the industry they always say they're not the cheapest but they're the best they'll get it fixed uh the first time and yo like you get a free loaner car like that's the worst part now i'm not suggesting you use it for gig work because you do need to pay for the gas in there <laughs> but i mean it's such a bitch when you get your car repaired oh, and yeah. then you can uh 
you don't have a car to do anything. Like you, okay, so you can't work because you're a gig worker. So your your car's down. Then you don't have a car to even run errands. That would have been a great day if you had a loaner car. Hey, I need to go to the grocery store. I need to go whatever, pick up some supplies. Sure. But anyways, yeah, you can check them out. Irvines.com. Catherine said, "Yeah, I made a live." I think she means she made oh, it to the show the live. live. Show. Yeah, it's a I live forget show. Where Catherine's Welcome, from. Catherine. Thank you. All right, first story. As you know, I'm a slave to Walmart. Did I forget to load? Oh no, there it is. It's, it's, why are you talking about? It's Walmart? out of order. Ugh. So I work for Walmart Spark. Uh, it's an app separate from Walmart, but I shop for Walmart. And this is I didn't. This is didn't happen in my area, but uh, this it says, "Hey drivers, reminder: select stores in your area are currently participating participating in a pilot program where Walmart Plus customers, that's like uh, Amazon Prime for Walmart, Walmart Plus, do not have the option to add pre or post delivery tips. <laughs> Instead, we've been offering a special incentive for all completed trips from these stores. Keep an eye out for this special incentive <laughs> on no tip orders. Hey, what the hell? <laughs> like." I saw, I, God help me if that comes in my area, I'm going to be pissed. Because basically, they're going to take the tips, give us an extra two bucks, and the customer may tip 15. And then not, and they probably won't even tell the customer. Well, I mean, see, other apps have done that before, and it usually ends up, you know, backfiring not, you know, a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, I, I really hope that does not happen uh, in my area. Cause have, I'm you, be- have you ever had a situation with Uber? Back in the day, you know, back when when Uber was still a thing, <laughs> it still is a thing. <laughs> Where you know for a fact that a passenger put in a higher tip than you got. I can't say I like watched them put in a higher tip, but I've heard them say that. But it, I see it every day. People posting about that. Like I watched my customer put in right. twenty dollars, and it gave me fifteen. Like I had one where the guy was so drunk he asked me to put in twenty dollars. That, that's a I, little weird. I did, and I, it only gave me five. Really? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And there's no way to prove it, right? No, no. You, I didn't take a screenshot of it. You <laughs> almost have to take your dash cam footage and like, here you go. This is this is what we did, but <laughs> who's going to do that? Same with me. Like, I, I have to take screenshots of the tip I got. So I do have another story for the road. I took a order today to the hood, okay? I see why nobody grabbed it because it was going for the hood, going to the hood. But it was there was a $15 tip on it. I'm so scared that... Well, scared. I took it. There's nothing I can do about it. But you take a screenshot of the order right? and then the order number. And then tomorrow, if I don't get that $15 tip, I am calling support. I'm like, Where, where'd it go? Did the customer take it away? But anyways, there's 92 items. So much pop. So, and thank God it was a one floor apartment or it was the ground floor. It took me 15 minutes to unload it. Yeah, it was It was the biggest order I ever. I didn't was shop it, for that. It was, was just it a, a Walmart order? Yeah. Oh, okay. Groceries. Yeah. Groceries. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, All Kath- pop, huh? Yeah, a lot of pop. Catherine said, "Have y'all had any troubles getting approved for housing rentals?" Oh, yes. I have not had that trouble, uh, Catherine. I have a W two in the summer, and so, and then my wife is uh, W two, so it really doesn't hurt us much in as far right. as like applying for loans. I don't actually even tell people that I work for Uber. I just take the income I make in the summer and then just don't say anything about it, but. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, I don't know how we talk to Buckle Insurance. That's going to be coming out in a couple right. of weeks. If you want to get uh, early and, release, you can join the Patreon. And and they have some. They have a program where they help you with uh, with cars. With cars. So some they didn't. Financing. They didn't talk about. Um, didn't talk about housing, but definitely no. financing for cars. So it's it's a thing, and you know, the companies out there slowly getting used to it. Yeah, it's just tough. But yeah. I think the bottom line is if you're applying for something, I would show your taxes, tax returns. Right. Like, don't show them your monthly income because it, it flexes so much. And that's what I think people worry about. Well, and then, I mean, if you can show a little bit of a, of a, uh, like, kitty in your bank. Yes. Yeah. I if, mean, if you have a little m- bit of make savings. Make sure you have three to $4,000 in savings. That always lower the risk. Yeah. All right. Next up. Next up, I got to speak back over to this one. So this is about, it's kind of, it's, it's really just more of a feel good, feel good story, I guess. Um, the article is all about um, why Americans, let's see if I get the title correctly. Hang on, I'm sorry about that. No, you're good. 
Americans joined the gig economy during the pandemic and then why you should too. They said 35% of Americans joined the gig economy during the pandemic. And as I said, it's really just a, a few good stories all about how you can use the gig economy to uh, supplement your income and kind of if you, you know, lost an income or lost both incomes or whatever it yeah. is as a family during the pandemic, then this is a good way of kind of having flexible, you know, as you know, the flexibility of the gig economy while still making some money. But as we'll hear, hear later on, we're going to have an article talking about what you can expect to earn as, <laughs> as a gig economy worker. So it's not all, you know, it's not all that good necessarily. You, you do have to treat it as a work, as a job and you do have to kind of work it. As we all know, you guys have all been here for years. You know, this is, this is a job. You gotta, you, you gotta be out there and work it. So it's not just, you know, all, uh, all, all that. Uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Anyways, mumbo jumbo. Yeah, yeah, it's not. All, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> so, anyways, it's really just as I said. You know, if you need some money, gig economy is a good way of of kind of earning a little bit more money. So, if but they, not, but your point is treating it like a business. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You there's, can't. There's so many people I've seen right now. Like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to write off mileage. Like when they did their taxes. Like, what the hell, y'all? Like, right. and again, there's only one advice there, right? Get a tax account. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> Get a tax account. We never hustled one for a sponsorship this year. I don't no. know why we didn't, but. Also, there is one good thing that if you don't know it already, you need to know this, right? All the stimulus money you got last year is ta is not taxable. Remember that. We are not tax accountants and take this with a grain of salt. Yes. Consult your tax account. So I got to run up to a few people. I saw John or sorry, Gary from Middleton Technologies told him us to stop cussing. I didn't even say the F word yet. I mean, come on. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. John's like, I'm sure Megan would appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, she would. She, she loves me, so she'll never cancel our sponsorship. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. Uh, there was something else. Shut your dirty, cussy mouth. What, do you want to get on our Facebook page and, and talk as us there, Peter? Uh, oh, no, too late. I took you off. Peter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, this is <sighs> you've all been waiting for this. I know you've seen this article. DoorDash to penalize McDonald's outlets that take too long on delivery orders. I about I was giddy when I read this because I'm like, <laughs> they're actually not the worst. Uh, I would say Wendy's in my area is the worst. But so, as you know, uh, last year, I think DoorDash signed a, a re-signed deal with McDonald's, a more exclusive deal. But uh DoorDash will start dinging eateries by raising its commission rates, which will jump as high as 20% off an order that McDonald's restaurants have to pay. The higher rates will kick in when drivers have to wait more than four minutes. That's that's not much. I mean, I, I would probably say uh, I wait an average of more than four minutes. Right. So as part of the agreement, McDonald's restaurants that reach a certain threshold of customer refunds as well by forgetting the Coke, for instance, also will have to pay for those refunds themselves. What? Whoa. Because, <laughs> you know, DoorDash gives customers credit. They just take it out of their, their own cut. Uh, meanwhile, the commissions that the McDonald's restaurants will pay will rise in, two, in 2023 as much as 17.5% and 20% for the outlets that are taking too long with orders, according to the report. For restaurants that are in compliance with delivery time rules, Do DoorDash will change, will charge only 11.5% to 14.1% respectively, depending on whether a customer is a member of the DoorDash loyalty program or not. So a lot of different variables for McDonald's with DoorDash. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that. Yeah, DoorDash lowered the base rate McDonald's pays on orders from non Dash Pass subscribers to eleven and a half to fourteen for Dash Pass subscribers. So interesting. They're focusing giving a better deal for the Dash Pass people, but say that five times fast. Good lord. <laughs> I have my Dash Pass. Dash Pass. Um man, that is interesting. What I would like to see then then it, it doesn't go in effect till next year. I'm wondering if they're gonna streamline us not having to go through the F and drive through. I mean, that's the worst. Right. Like I want to be able to come in like today in Wendy's, I went in there. There was no area for me to go. I had to wait in line with the other customers. I get it. Okay. I'm no one more important than them, but I'm here to pick up food. And honestly, 
the food was already ready. I waited for 15 minutes in line, and she's like, oh, yeah, it's right here. Now, I guess it's my fault. Right. I should have said something. She seemed frazzled. I didn't want to be a dick, surprisingly. And so I didn't say anything, but McDonald's is going to have to really streamline it. I mean, why can't they do like some other restaurants who just have it up there ready? I mean, you yeah. don't have to necessarily ask yeah, for it. Yeah, she had it. Well, that's the frustrating part. Like, I would have just gone through the drive-thru. Apparently, they were waiting in the drive-thru, but the Taco Bell in Jenison doesn't, will not give us the food in the drive-thru. If right. you're stuck in that drive-thru, you have to go all the way inside. And I get that, but all these restaurants have different policies. It's I like, know. what the it's hell am I different. supposed to do? It's all different, yeah. Um, so Catherine asked, and this could be a, a question for everybody, right? Because you know who you know who's. I think it's different answer for, based on who you ask. Is DoorDash better than Grubhub? Well, uh, just like everything, it's area specific. So in Grand Rapids, Grubhub was the first one here. It used to be a cash cow for me. Like right. I used to make money hand over fist. Then Uber Eats, uh, you know, during the pandemic, pre-pandemic, they sucked. <laughs> uh, and now DoorDash is the most popular here. Right. But I get the most low uh, minimum pay orders on DoorDash. I might get 20 low pay before I get one I'll take. Um, thanks to Gary's, uh, services on driver <laughs> utility helper, uh, same for Maximo. Uh, but on Grubhub, most of the time when I get one, it's worth taking. So I don't know if that really helps you, Catherine or not. I mean, it all depends on your area. So my daughter who's 12, right? She goes over to a good friend who is also 12 mm -hmm. and then they get, you know, a good friend's grandmother to order them both, you know, coffees from on Grubhub. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. So within 10 minutes though. <laughs> they get it from Big B. Yeah. Yeah. Big B's big on Grubhub. <laughs> so I want to go back to Gary's comment. If you think this will fly with McDonald's, they're crazy. You know how many no tip orders go through McDonald's and sit? McDonald's isn't going to allow this. They can easily drop DD and use Uber Eats and Grubhub only. Right. But they, but I totally, I never thought about the low tip orders because that shit's going to wait forever. But the problem is they signed a, an agreement for a couple of year contracts. So at least they're on the hook for a while. But. It's going to definitely be interesting to see what's going to happen with the no tip orders. That's <laughs> well, you won't be waiting for four minutes because by the time you get in there, that shit's been sitting on the shelf for an hour. So you won't be waiting. But <laughs> but then but then also also who gets dinged on that? Does DoorDash or, or Uber or I'm sorry, uh, McDonald's? Good question. Because who because they talked about who's paying for the refund when the right. customer gets cold food. So but. Uh, All right, you're up next. I am up next. I have a picture. A picture that I posted. It's somebody, as Jason said, I'm always posting from the Uber Lyft classroom. That's what <laughs> seemed to be coming up on my Facebook. So I went to a restaurant. My waitress was a PAX. I had had at um had that had a 45 minute ride that took me deep into the country, where I had no service and wrote no rides till I got back into the city 30 minutes back. I had to deal with her three demons, or, I mean three children being brats and still completed the ride. I had every right to just drop them off and cancel the trip. And she wasn't even the nicest person there was and asked me if I could turn off my country music because it's offensive to her being a black African woman. woman. And she left no tip. So with that being said, when I went to pay for the bill, on the line that says I tip, says sip, I wrote tip your ride share drivers. Whoa. So <laughs> anyways, it was... How is country music... Uh, offensive to being a black I don't woman. Know. I don't know. But yeah. apparently that's what she said. Okay. But it doesn't sound like she earned, you know, what is it like? It's called karma, right? Yeah. It comes back. Karma does come back to bite you. <laughs> so, I, sure. I mean, I certainly understand him. I would have done the same thing, I think. Yeah, for <laughs> yeah. sure. So, uh, Gary, how, how many can you remember? How many of your writers can you remember like that? I, I don't, I, like bad ones? Yeah. I mean, not, not too many. No. I mean, it's been so uh, long since I've done consistent ride share. Like the last week, I've just been sick. I just didn't want to take people. So I've just been suffering through a little bit uh, of not getting my goal right away. But uh, I don't remember. I mean, I can remember like your story with that guy that was an off duty cop. I remember sure. that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I <laughs> probably remember more y'all stories than my own, right. to be honest with you. But. Um, I mean, yeah. I remember a couple of faces, right? I wanted the, the guy at the concert, you know, him the, the, turned into a complete dickwad. But I mean, other than that, I don't, I mean, most people, I just don't, I, 
there was so many people went through my car. I don't remember. Yeah. You know, it's uh, I, again, that was the one th- comment that kind of went through my mind. Like, How do you remember who it was? <laughs> so, right. Like, that's, yeah. Matt, I am not a top dasher. Shut your mouth. That's Leo's position. <laughs> Gary says Grubhub is my best paying in my area, but DD is the most order, but the lowest pay for the. Yeah, that's probably the same thing, too. Also, oh, Catherine is from Grand Rapids. The last couple of quests have been horrible. Incentive disappointing is Grand Rapids getting them that low. Um, Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. I haven't had an Uber quest that's good in about a month. Everyone was so upset they didn't have anything for the Super Bowl. I'm like, because that's because everyone's going to drive. Like, they're not going to put incentives out. So, well, we talked about that too at the, at obviously last, uh, actually last Friday at, at the radio show. We talked a little bit about whether or not uh, Grand Abbots was a good town, town for, um, for, for driving uh, during the game. And it's historically, it hasn't been. Yeah. Uh, but, but in Texas, where they were in Houston, it was always a great day to drive. They, you know, making good money. Yeah. So it's so different from market to market. So. Yeah, it totally is. Oh, I got a burp. I drank that way too fast. Nice. Good job. Let's all oh. wait. There you go. Good was, job. I tried Jaylen. to keep it low. That was nice. That oh, was... it did smell good. <laughs> all right. Speaking of DoorDash, this is not the DoorDash podcast. I swear to God. So I don't know if this is real or not. If somebody can confirm it, it looks legit to me. DoorDash is hiring curbside runners. This is what it says. So it says, hi, I'm reaching out for DoorDash team with an exciting opportunity. We are looking to provide other flexible part-time jobs that dashers can do when they're not delivering because you're sending us $2 fucking orders. In this case, we're looking for dashers to fill. The- <laughs> Did it say that? No, it didn't. I added the F word. To, uh, uh, bah, bah, bah. We're looking for dashers to fill the role of a food runner at participating restaurants in your area. The pay rate for this opportunity would be $20 an hour plus an additional 20 upon arrival to the merchant. Um, so basically you're just a food runner. You go inside, you say I'm with DoorDash and they tell you what to do and you run the food out. So again, I don't know if this is real, but would, I mean, so on the surface it's $20 an hour, right? But then you also get 20 bucks. Okay. And you got there. Yeah. But so, so you work four hours. So, so then you're at $25 an hour. Did I do the math right? Yeah. Well, you did. So you work four hours, you get two hundred bucks, right? So there you go. No, no, no. It's only twenty bucks an hour, though. Yeah, but you get or twenty dollars. No, I did you, the math when right. When you get there, you get a twenty. So you, you get a twenty right away. Yeah, five times four. Okay, I did it. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's twenty. So if you worked four hours, it's twenty five bucks an hour. Right. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, that's not that's uh, so cheap." Blah blah blah. But there's no expense. There's no car expense. You're not driving around. So right. Matt said he'd do that for twenty five bucks an hour for four hours. But there's also no miles to deduct. True. <laughs> so if you did that regularly, you would have to put you would have to put some money away from taxes. I don't right. know. I think it's one of those things where you could do it from time to time, but don't make it your main thing because you're gonna pay out the ass on taxes. But is it a real thing though? It seems I, Do I you mean, think it's fake? Well I, I even if it's not fake, even if it's something they want to try, there's no way that it would it would be like something they, they could keep paying for. I don't know, because what I think is these restaurants are struggling to get employees in the door. That's, That's what's going on now. Pre-pandemic, you'd never see this because they have plenty of workers. But I read something. But this is just people running the food. From the restaurant to the car, right. not making the food. No, just... but it keeps that. I mean, if you look at a really busy restaurant, th- there, there's six to eight people in that curbside area. Like on right. a Friday and Saturday night, if you have an extra runner that the restaurant doesn't have to pay, worry about Benny's, all that stuff. That's why they're doing it. I also read an article. Don't know where I read it, so don't quote me on it. That Target is doing a lot of that gig work for their employees. It's super flexible. You have to work one shift every six months. You can stay an employee and get a discount. You get offered some shifts, and that you can take them or you don't have to take them. They're trying to make employment like gig work, but you're still considered a Target employee. So give it flexibility. The flexibility. So. So wondering if they're gonna move away from the employee <laughs> once once they get the people involved, you know, used to it, and now you know, all of a sudden, now you're at ten ninety nine. Bye bye. You mean the rest of the employees? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think we're gonna start seeing uh, oh, yeah. more companies go to that. 
uh, well, whether it's good or bad, I don't know. I mean, it's great for me, right? Every every winter when I get laid off, I'm like, oh, I got a new gig I can try, you know. But I mean, I think I think it's a it's a new way people are thinking, right? It's it's the like the way that what you're doing. I gotta make X money a day. You wake up in the morning and say, okay, I gotta figure out how to make X money today. And when you're done, when you're making your X money, you can choose to go home, or you yeah. can hustle, you can do more. Yeah, right. So. And I think more and more are going to go to that. I, lo- I absolutely love the flexibility. Jesper was mad at me today because when I got done working, I took a 90-minute nap. He's like, must be nice. I'm like, well, I'm doing gig work. <laughs> now, ask me if I hit my goal today. I did not and got frustrated and went home. I was $20 <laughs> short. And I'm like, I am not dealing with this shit anymore. So I went home and uh, ate and took a nap. <laughs> that I got frustrated after that, that Wendy's run. Yeah. After that late, after sitting there, I'm like, and then after I dropped that off in Jenison, I drove all the way home, not one effing ping on three food delivery apps at 1245. What? I know. What the? F- I, I thought my internet bill didn't get paid because I'm like, <laughs> what is going on? Wow. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, so if you want to be a curbside runner, I guess. I don't know why they block the the thing out. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, I I don't know. So if anyone finds if this is legit or not, I'd I'd be interested to know. So So Victoria, I I'm, let's get let's get healthcare insurance for everybody, but let's not, let it not be Medicare. Come on, let's come up with a better option. Yeah, I'm not even I'm uh, I'm not I yeah. But I am all for social health care. So we're gonna do a, a quick ad and then a couple of great stories. Something about Uber, which is super incredible that uh I, I hope it comes to our market sort of uh this is an ad for us patreon.com search the gig econ podcast uh i think it's gig econ i i seriously just <laughs> i did look it go up go to gig economy show.com slash links yes you can get it right there thank you uh i was gonna see what yeah just do that don't listen to yes or don't listen to me <laughs> we'd love for you to support us uh you get an extra podcast a month this month it was the interview with buckle which was really good i really enjoyed the time with uh oh. dustin i think his name dustin yeah dustin um it was super fun i i learned so much and mm-hmm. i'm super excited about buckle it's not going to be in michigan for a while but yeah if you want to support us other than sharing the show this is a good way financially to do it and then next the next special episode is going to be about a an app that's been around for a while where you will have power to make that help help it grow in your market. What's that? We talked about that. Which one? I can't say because then it's, you know. What is this, what's the first the letter? L. Nah, we, had, we didn't do an interview. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. You didn't record it? No, that was just a meeting. <sighs> We've already talked about that company. Damn it. Lunder. We did an interview. Yeah, that was not an interview, bro. That was just you a should meeting. have pushed a button anyway. Oh my <laughs> gosh! Look, you see what I'm dealing with over here. Uh, Sweet Jesus. Anyways, on that note, that since we talk about launder, actually, it's pretty cool because you do not have to wait until they get to your market. Right. You can sign up for launder on launder.com, and then you have the power to go in and you can spread the word about them. Go out, spring flyers or whatever, and you can you can use their platform. To make money. Yeah. To get people. You can wash their clothes for them and everything. All the tools is right there. Go but to launder.com. No, no. Don't go there yet. Wait till we get our uh, oh, affiliate yeah. link and then go to <laughs> launder.com. No, we talked about them a long time ago. They're great. We just reconnected with uh, Steve. Steven. Steven. Yeah. yeah so. Steve, uh, Stephen. <laughs> Stephen. Oh, remember, it's, remember we had the comments I know. The it's show. because you don't know how to pronounce PH. All right, go. <laughs> Go. I can't just go like that. It's your article, bro. I know. I know. I know. So, would you like to be able to pay for your Uber ride using cryptocurrency? You know, if I knew how to fucking do anything with crypto, maybe, <laughs> but I it scares me. You know what, what would scare me is that a ride that one day would cost me $10, <laughs> the next day would cost me $25. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah. Don't use crypto as your main <laughs> source of uh, funding your Uber account. So basically, the CEO, Dara, Uber's C- CEO, Dara, says that in the future, people will be able to pay for their rides using Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, but it's not there yet, but it is something that they're working on getting to in, in the future. And I, as I said before, I, I mean, it's just, it's way, it's way, too, way, way too volatile. <laughs> <laughs> it's way too volatile. 
Um, and yeah, as a, right. What was I noticed the other day? It's, Ethereum was like it went up almost twenty five percent over the se- uh, course of one day, and because it it jumps like that, right? And it's just crazy. Dustin says he has over five hundred million or five hundred million Shiba. What is that even worth, Dustin? <laughs> yeah, you what? can't even tell me what, what that's worth. But is it Dogecoin though, Justin? That's what I want to know. Didn't Dogecoin like drop out? Oh yeah, I, I don't know. I can't even keep track of it. <laughs> that's the thing. That's the that right there is the problem with cryptocurrency. Yeah, right? it's like no before they even adopt. Did, it's gone again right yeah so the, what what about the stupid nfts with memes a meme can be like valuable have you heard of that oh yeah 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 but that's what? an nft nfts is a the, the beautiful thing about an M- nft is even though it's digital it is a one thing only no it's not because i can pull that meme up and, and store it on my computer he doesn't i know but it's that the, my my point is it is that meme it's that nft Okay, but why does he, he bought it for like forty, or like four million dollars? I don't know. I'm blowing money out of my. It's unique. Yeah, yeah, but, but but I can own I, it too, and it's not worth anything. Right. Why is his worth more than mine? And he, I don't understand. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> because you don't have the original real NFT. You so you think he actually has the original one? Well, yeah. If he paid forty million dollars for it, he has it. Yes. I call bullshit. <laughs> Did you know that there is well. He didn't pay $40 million. I don't know what he paid for. Right. But there was, an but it was N- a significant amount there of money. There was an NFT that went for a hundred. What was it? Was it a hundred million dollars? A hundred. It was like crazy amount of money. Yeah. But anyways, hey, Jerry, how are you doing tonight? But yes, NFT, NFTs is definitely a thing to, to, you know, to, to read up on and listen to. Um, I follow a guy called Gary V. Oh yeah, Gary and v. he is way into NFTs. So if you want to know about that NFTs, listen to him. Yeah, be ready for an intense conversation because oh. that guy's intense. But he's so motivating. I love that guy because he just talks like me. Right. <laughs> no, he is. He's super super motivating. So, yeah. but yes, definitely. All right. What well, we all been waiting for, and thank you to the ride chair guy for posting this incredible article. I mean, it's super long, and uh, it's I love it. So it kind of was weird because upfront. Uber upfront pricing makes a move into new market, something in upfront pricing. We've had up, upfront pricing for customers. I think it's titled wrong. It should be like you get upfront pricing for the driver gets this. So it is just a quick summary. Up, up pricing for drivers. That's what the title should have said is transitioning into more markets, giving drivers consistency, reliab- re- reliability. <laughs> I sort of got it. All I had was the Coke <laughs> and earnings. Rate balancing will be increasing earnings for short trips and lowering pay for long trips overall. Drivers who prefer short rides may come out ahead versus driver who prioritize long trips. So basically, this is what California had, and then they took it away, where basically you could know where the the pickup was, how long it was, how much you were getting paid uh, out the door. It's starting in Dallas, Houston, Atlanta, New Orleans, Cincinnati, St. Louis, and Tampa. Um, this is very similar, like I said, what to California rolled out in 2019 with one notable exception. Drivers in these markets will not have to maintain any level of acceptance rate in order to see the upfront pricing. See, that's what Lyft was doing for a while, too. Or maybe you couldn't see the pricing, but you could see where you were going. Right. Um, here's the weird thing, though. Uber will be rebalancing rates and lowering that per mile rate, increasing the per minute rate to avoid having drivers cherry pick the best rides so basically short rides will pay more longer rides will pay less so that's hmm i mean we have more longer rides here because we have a lot of suburbs like if you're in right. like downtown chicago that'd be great right because you're just bebopping but it was the same thing when they did the whole you know changing in the surge downtown yeah dustin don't spoil it i'm not done with the article yet you bastard <laughs> yeah so i don't know if i like the uh like that it's you know a little bit less on the long rides but so then what is rate rebalancing as part of these changes drivers will no longer see time and distance on their receipt instead an upfront price is what you'll get this will include the sur or this will include surge the surge map is not changing plus the base fare and the time and distance but drivers will not see those numbers so they're basically just like out the door pricing, like right. Dustin said, like Instacart, like you're going to make 10 bucks on this or like Walmart Spark, you're going to make $20 on this. But won't that kill the interest, the fun that going for the, the, 
what's it called the um the one reason I would stay out every every weekend night was for the rush. It was the well, you were f- the rush of the surge. Yeah. You still get the surge. That's not going but, anywhere. But you don't see it. You see the final price. That's true, which is kind of shady. So another thing he put, rate re- rebalancing will also change what drivers see on their receipt. Right. Why? Probably because they won't want drivers to figure out what Uber's take is. Oh, In absolutely. addition, if Uber is adjusting rates based on distance, this can be a way for them to change rates without notice as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. He asked Uber about it, and the spokesperson said, just like in other markets, drivers in these markets can still see what the rider paid and keep track of what Uber's take is. But you only can, yeah. Because, you know, when you, I know it's been so long since you drove. (laughs) When you see your receipt, it tells you how many miles times the rate. They're going to take that away. So that's a little shady. That's bullshit. So here's what Dustin spoiled for me. I'm going to smack him. Uh, (laughs) No, I'm just kidding, Dustin. Trip radar. So this is interesting. And I'm going to share this link because the article is really good. He's got pictures in here. Pictures. Pictures. Basically, when you're driving at slow speeds, you can click trip radar and see what Uber X rides are available near you and then choose the one you want. <laughs> so some stuff that'll take your attention away from the road. Well, That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so the picture you'll see in here, it has dollar signs. Like it's basically... Two dollar sign, three dollar sign, four dollar sign. So basically, how much that? So basically, it pops up and you just quit. Gra- it's like round robin, like for Walmart or Instacart, just like Dustin said. You just grab it when you see it. You just tap it. But that doesn't seem very safe. Though. Well, fuck. That's why Gary created all these apps because <laughs> it isn't safe. Gary, fix it. <laughs> fix it, Gary. How can we do that? Can we set parameters? Fix it, Gary. Can we can we set parameters for only four dollar signs on this? So I, I actually kind of want to try that just for fun. Like, I don't know if it uh, will work, but. So it would be better if I have like a 10-inch tablet? Is that- At this point, <laughs> we need full like 20-inch screens in our car. We need an app that runs on my Tesla screen. <laughs> yeah. Gary, yeah. <laughs> Gary says, I don't understand the radar. Why aren't they sending these rides to drivers? I don't either. It's almost like they're um, they're predicting that this person's going to ride and they I want know. you to see it. I, I don't know. So. How Trip Radar works. You can then tap on any request you're interested in, select as many favorites as you want. Since other drivers will have access to the list too, you won't get all your picks. Matching is aimed at minimizing average wait time for drivers and riders. But the more you tap, the more likely you are to match with the option you really want. But yeah, you're right. So you're tapping it. You're reading what it is. You're driving down the road. <laughs> but it says only if you're going slowly. So you know Uber can tell how fast you're going. <laughs> No, seriously, just like when you have to take a picture. No, I know. When you're going like 10 above, they don't let you take the picture. You I have know. to stop. What are you laughing at? I just think it's funny. They want you to touch the phone when you're driving. Yeah, there's got to be. Yeah, that seems. <laughs> well, yeah, it's going to be worth. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good point. What if you're sitting in the parking lot? Why are you showing me rides that I could get? Just give me a, f- a ride and let's get on with life. I think this, that's the one problem I've always had with Uber. Why do they have to keep? changing a system that is ultimately okay yeah i don't understand either and gary makes such a good point why why aren't that why aren't they sending the drive i don't know it seems weird but hi ride chair lisa thanks for coming on all right i'm exa- exhausted from that article i'm excited about it but it won't come <laughs> to grand rapids so it doesn't matter well, anyway. it'd be a small enough market so yeah you it, you somebody you guys in in la or new york or whatever and you get it gets your markets let us know how it goes yeah i'd love to interview somebody that has yes. has that so see how it works with the with the ride share radar <laughs> i that's the most thing i'm excited for so let's go get the ride share radar.com right now the domain it's probably already taken <laughs> all right you're up well you have a picture for me right you mean the picture that's on the screen i know there you go so this was an it actually came to my email because i am a, i'm on hulu so now they have this whole thing with hulu and uber one you can get six free months of uber one membership on us i gotta I, my eyes are too tired i gotta switch to that one here so here with an uber one membership you'll get member only pricing and perks on uber and uber eats whether you're staying in to catch up on your favorite shows or taking hulu on the go uber one's we got you covered with all the benefits, right? Unlimited zero dollar de- delivery fees. Yes, Bert. Oh my gosh, what? 
RideshareRadar.com is available. Oh, there you go. You better three, buy it. It's three bucks. No, I'm not going <laughs> to buy it. Member pricing with 5% off eligible rides and deliveries, priority service, and exclusive perks. Now, obviously, I did not buy it because I don't use Uber One enough. Yeah, they have all these programs, the DoorDash program, the the Uber One, all these things. I don't get it. I so. just thought it was interesting that now the streaming services is teaming up with them as well. But, of course, you know, when you're sitting there watching TV, you're going to want food. So that makes sense. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, okay. We got a couple of small ones to wrap up. Got to thank uh, my, uh, Matt Fleetstra from, uh, he's a, he used to do gig work. He, he, he does a little bit of flex, but he saw this. He got it sent somewhere in Michigan. Someone loves to be either a Grubhub driver or a Grubhub shopper. No, Some, eater. Someone e that gets e a lot of Grubhub, <laughs> but I thought that was a cool plate. Um, and this awesome thing. For uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, did you see the Uber commercial on the Super Bowl? No, I so, didn't see the So Super Bowl. it was an Uber Eats commercial, and basically it was them saying they were they you ate whatever you got, but they were all eating weird shit. Like <laughs> this is um, kind of funny because Gwyneth Paltrow uh, has a candle and it says this smells like my vagina, and so she's eating her vagina. No, well, I guess it could say that. I, don't I know. mean, that's. That's what it says. <laughs> Hold on, I got Now I got to go to. There were some funny comments that took up the whole page. You can't even see us now. Um, but anyways, it was a funny commercial. I didn't want to play it because I knew we'd get uh, <laughs> we'd get kicked off. Well, big yeah, time, so. we're not playing it. Uh, what what did it say? Now delivering eats and uh, please. Oh, it says now delivering eats and don't eat. So basically, it was just everything you shouldn't eat. Um, it says Uber Eats wins the best commercial during Super Bowl, having Gwyneth Paltrow eat her vagina candle. Game over. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty funny, so you should check it out. I guess I should. Yeah, it's you, really funny. You skipped over my TikTok video. No, I didn't. Did I? Yes, you did. Um, yeah. So it was kind of funny. <laughs> her candle. You need to watch. You need to play that TikTok video. Did I skip over it? Yeah. Let me see. Her candle was number 11. Oh, the video I did 10. skip over it. Hold see, on. Let me catch this up. This is what I have to deal with, guys. Whatever. This is the bullshit. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Here is a road rage thing Jesper found. It really isn't gig related, but um, it's still kind of funny. It was funny. funny nonetheless. Yeah, it's about a minute and some change. Look at this fool. Look. Look at this dude, man. Going in the right lane. <laughs> this guy's funny. Boy, somebody pissed somebody off this morning. Look at that. Golly, there he goes again. You kill somebody. Oh. Hey, look at him. Use the right lane to Road take it. Road rage. Look at him. Look at this dude. He has lost his book. She just threw a cup of. She just threw, threw a drink can out the window at him. In 2.9 miles, turn right uh -oh, to merge onto I-3 uh -oh, West. Oh, that's what happens. And here it comes. Oh, snap. Get him. Get him. <laughs> I hope that's the law. Yeah. Yeah. Get him, baby. <laughs> Tear his head up. Oh, that was the funniest part. Woo <laughs> that's like instant karma. Good guys win. He got out quick. He's... Uh, that guy's going to jail. Oh, yeah. I mean, that guy is going to jail. <laughs> Sorry about the internet issue, y'all. The good guys win. I love that. <laughs> yeah. That's always the best. The guy commenting or narrating it is the yeah. best part of that whole thing. So, um, oh, I just saw that. And I was like, okay, we got to show that one. Right. Um, so, you got an article and then a couple more pictures. And yep. We're so, out. this is the article we were talking a little bit about earlier. Basically, um, Interesting was that this is a study that sheds the light on what an Uber driver actually make. And they talked to, I want to get the number right, they talked to 11,000 Uber drivers. And they're saying here, which is one in eight of all the Uber drivers who were working in the study period over 2017, 2018. So these numbers are old, obviously. Yeah, but the article was new this this right. month. I yes. did check that before yeah. you posted. <laughs> no, no, yeah, the article is from the fourteenth. But anyway, so so what they found though was that um, generally, let's see here, that Uber drivers before cost makes an average of twenty nine forty six dollars an hour. 
But after cost, they make $21 an hour. And again, remember, you still have to answer taxes of this. But again, if you're writing your mileage off correctly, absolutely. you don't pay a ton Abs- of taxes. Absolutely. That's the thing. But they were co- they were comparing it to uh, you know, other other jobs and it's very easy to to make that hourly rate, mm-hmm. hourly wage if you can go out and get another job. But of course, as they bring up is that you have all the flexibility um of of um of of a gig share job, you know, work whenever you want to work. Start when they want, finish when they want. Uber drivers exploit this flexibility mercilessly. So that's fine, right? Mm-hmm. Um, half of all Uber drivers have another job at the same time, while 11%, 11% are studying and 18% are looking for a job. Often the Uber driver is more highly qualified than their passengers to study reveals. So, again, you know, this is, this is, um, there's there's lots of benefits with with this kind of job. Yeah, the but flexibility. It's certainly not the best paying. No. Now, one thing they are saying is there's obviously, and we know this, there's ways to you know make sure that you end up in the higher end. Make sure you pick the right area times to drive in your market. And yeah. again, Grand Rapids, you know, you want to drive weekends. Yeah. I mean, that's how easy it is. But again, markets are different, so you know, make sure you. Do the do the tests in your market. Make sure you test different times of the week and what's best for you, and you know that kind of stuff. And then treat it as a job. You really got to think about though. You can't put a price on the flexibility. Like if oh, you sure. if you're a single mom, your kids go to school, or you have to take kids to doctor. Well, even Matt, Matt's struggling with some kidney issues. He's able to go to a, a doctor's appointment, dialysis, and then he right. can get back to work. Like. You cannot put a price on flexibility if it oh, sure. really helps you. But you you do have to be smart, too. You don't just drive right. randomly. Like, do your research, figure it out when the best times to drive are. And then, as we've also said all along, is don't just have one bucket. Don't do just do Uber. Do Uber, Lyft, all the delivery services. Be like Jason. All- Sign up for every app known to man in your market. Doesn't mean you have to do them all, but Jason was a juicer this year, guys. I would, uh, yes. <laughs> I'm not going to claim that because I definitely didn't make six hundred bucks, <laughs> but I was even a juicer. He was a juicer. Yeah, he tried it. He was excited about it for about two seconds. <laughs> no, I was. I I like the challenge, but after if if the app was more accurate, if I didn't have app troubles, I would have probably. Uh, tried it a little bit more right maybe even thought about getting a trailer and doing it but the app was shit it was dog shit trying to drop these things off the geofence didn't work the gps didn't work i wasn't going to put up with that shit no nope not going to do it so um so let's see you got a couple more pictures look at this mf -er. 53 trips in one day how is that even possible small small trips I mean, it looks legit. It doesn't even look Photoshop. Seven hundred and eighty-nine dollars he made in fifty-three trips. I mean, he only gets twelve hours. You only get twelve hours. Like, what's the math on that? All right. But is it? Are you sure it's only one day though? It says today. Oh, today, yeah. I guess fifty-three they, yeah. trips completed. So what is that? So you get twelve hours. I mean, I could do I could do three to four rides an hour. You know. That's four point four one rides an hour. Now, it doesn't mean it, it could it could be eats too. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's no way you're doing four and a half eats an hour. That no, ain't happening because you no. got to wait. But I guess it's possible. It was a good day though. This is not an everyday occurrence. No, but even the money amount. I mean, fifty three trips for for almost jeez. God, eight eight hundred bucks. Eight hundred bucks is incredible. But maybe that was Uber pool. So I don't know about that. <laughs> not not that amount of money. I'm pretty sure Uber Pool is pretty low. <laughs> yeah, Gary says fourteen eighty nine average per trip, which is a pretty high average for a trip. Yeah. Uh, Keith, no, particularly for shorter rides. Yeah, I don't know if that's no. I don't know what that. I mean, I assume it is, but you don't. You never know. I mean, it, you, when people post shit, you got to kind of take it a, as a grain of salt. Like right. you never know if it's it's true or not, but. Um, and then the last picture, it's fitting this person. I call, I labeled, I like labeling this shit when I'm saving it. I re- labeled it Karen. This was interesting. Uber eats, Uber eats note from customer. Leave and it's long, <laughs> leave a door. 
You'll need to download an app to complete this order. I will send you a link in a message when you are close to my apartment complex. Tap the link and it'll take you to your app store to download the app. Chip access. <laughs> if tapping the link does not work, long press the message and copy the text into a web browser to follow the link. Once you have the app, all you need to do is scan the QR code next to the entrance door you want to unlock. You'll need to drive into the garage and go all the way to the top, which is the fourth floor. When you drive out into the top of the garage, there will be a door labeled Elevator G4 Turtle Creek in the corner to your right. Go through that and pass the elevator. Turn right, and my apartment is the first one on the right. I would say it would be a fuck no, I'm canceling. Yes. <laughs> yes. Cancel that shit. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Anytime I see that, if I have to download an app. Screw that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> no. So real quick before we wrap, I uh, I did actually, the guys are talking about curry. Y'all, I had my first curry delivery today. Uh, I didn't talk about it early on. I kind of forgot about it, but I got a little excited and I took it. I probably shouldn't have. It was $85 for 70 miles. So it was, now it's deadhead back, but I looked at it. It took me two hours, so I made like forty two fifty an That's hour. That's not bad. So yeah, I, uh, I I did take one today. It was a heating and cooling, and it was from GR to like um like somewhere near Benton Harbor or something. Was like that. Was it difficult to drop it off? No, I literally walked to the the heating supply. They walked it out to me. It was this big. I mean, no one can hear me on the podcast. See it on the podcast, <laughs> but it was the size of a a loaf. You broke your curry. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Uh, it, it was the size of a loaf of bread and I dropped it off. It, the app seemed to work, uh, seamlessly. It, what was interesting is they sent me a text and said, Hey, if you want this reply back with a 10, four, they literally were asking, like, even though I accepted it, they sent me a text too that said, do you want this or not? Let us know. And I, and it was super interactive. Like, I think somebody was right on the end of the right. phone. It wasn't automated. I was like, yes, I want this. And they're like, okay, thank you. And then off I went. Hmm. So nice. Yeah, I was uh I was pretty So you impressed. had to go to Ben Harbor to pick something up no, and then come back or it was right uh off the highway. I had to pick something from GR okay. and take it. So yeah, that's that's my second request, my first one that I was actually successful with. Nice. Yeah. So so yeah, that I mean forty two dollars an hour is not bad. No, I mean it's a lot of miles, but I mean it's think about it as like an Amazon route. I would have drove more miles for an Amazon route for less money. Well, and you don't have to get out all the time. No, you just drive it's straight there. I know yeah. the road was the highway was super windy today. It was uh, these semi trucks were doing this in front of me. I was like, shit. Uh, but uh no, I was super excited that I got it. That's why I took it so quick. I was like, Oh, I got a curry. I got a curry, I got a curry. <laughs> I'm so, all, all all excited. I was <laughs> like anytime you can do an app that I mean, in two hours I made eighty five bucks. So I can't do that in any other app no, that I'm doing right now. So not for sitting on your ass doing nothing. No, I was I mean, listening to podcasts the whole time and driving there down go. there, and I didn't have any passengers. So, all right, guys, thanks so much. I really appreciate Gary for checking in. Steve, Rideshare, Lisa, Jerry, Gillette, Keith. Thank you. I haven't seen that seen you in a long time. I really appreciate you yep. uh, still supporting the show. Catherine, of course. Uh, I'm going through the list. Um, Somebody mentioned you guys should have special uh, guests on there. We do sometimes have guests on the show. Yeah, if you but ever, it, but it dude, has been a while, dude. If you want to be on this show, you hit me up. Uh, uh, email us at team at gig economy dash podcast dot com or go to the gig economy show link. Gig economy show dot com. Yeah, for sure. Um, I I I would love anybody that wants to come on. I I love guests on there. It's fun. Oh yeah, yeah. So, and if you're local, maybe you, you can come in the studio. Well, hey, hey, this is my private home. That's true. Let's not offer that, Steve. You can be on any time, bro. Just send me a message. You got to be able to let me talk, though. Steve and I compete for for time. <laughs> That's good. It gets me a little bit scary here on Friday. I may, I may. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be on the radio show with Steve. I'm not sure. I, I'm well, not, what you I'm do not is up for that. I'll give you Tom Kelly, who's the, the host of the show. I'll give you his uh, text, and you can just say, hey, can you mute Steve? <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Thanks so much for listening. We appreciate it. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Good week, Joe. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.